Welcome back to the Profiting From Your Passion podcast. I'm David Wooten, your host tonight. And first of all, I wanna make sure that I give proper credit to Grant Alexander, the author of Profiting From Your Passion, his book. Please check it out on Amazon. While you're at it, check out mine, Meeting Homeless Jesus, A Journey From Believing To Knowing. And as always, that's it. That's the sales pitch. So let's move on to our discussion tonight. Tonight, uh, I know I say I'm excited about all of them, and I am, and I'm uber excited about this, this interview, this talk tonight. Tonight, we're talking with the young lady, Olivia, and Olivia has experiences that most of us, uh, well, some of us dream about doing, and some of us are glad we've never had to do it. And, and doing that, and it's just, I believe, an exceptional person and has a wonderful relationship with, with the Lord. And I just want to bring that to the front and, and let Olivia talk and, and let's get into seeing what, you know, what, what moves her, what are the passions that get her to do things that a lot of people would say no to and how she does that. So with that, Olivia, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, my name is Olivia Briolo. Um, I am from Kaplan, Louisiana, born and raised, went to public school all my life. Um, number six of nine children, um, sort of the, the youngest of the oldest group and the oldest of the youngest half. So um, definitely a middle child. And yeah, I think being raised in a big family was the biggest blessing so far of my life. Just always having a friend, always having someone to go to. So um, currently I am a caregiver. I work as a a direct service worker for um, a man who's got a really simple mind um, and some um, and some sicknesses. So um, yeah, that's been that's been my source of joy since last September. I really find a lot of joy in, in working with him and in serving him. Um, so what brings you joy about that? About what you know about working with somebody that's in that situation? Mm -hmm. um, so it's just an opportunity to encounter the Lord in a different way. Um, uh, and obviously encountering Jesus brings me the most joy <laughs> uh, more than anything in this whole life. So um, every time I go into work, uh, the opportunity to just kind of uh, abandon myself, um, leave whatever baggage I've got going on um, outside of work, and like having to enter into this environment that's um, like, I never know what I'm gonna step into, but uh, to have to, you know, like abandon myself and just be at peace um, and content and present myself the same way every time to this, to this person of Jesus, um, honestly, is just so good and it's so rewarding. Um, and it bring it keeps me rooted. Honestly, my job has kept me rooted. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. So, so it's easy all the time, right? No, <laughs> it's, it's almost never easy. It's almost never yeah. easy. But yeah, you go in easy. it knowing I'm going to get joy out of this. Yeah. And well, and no, not even, not even always like sometimes like, okay, Lord, like it's going to have to be you. It's going to have to be a supernatural grace because I am so broken right now, or I'm so like in my head right now, you know, it's going to have to be you that shows up. And more often than not, he shows up in my client and my client ministers to me and I'm able to have the grace to abandon myself um, just in those moments. So whether it's through my prayer or through my client, like it always happens to where I'm able just to be present to Jesus um, in that workplace. It's it, never easy, though. It's, <laughs> it's never, never easy. easy. You know, the first podcast I recorded was a good friend of mine, Tommy W. And Tommy tell the story about Mr. Fred, a, a, a poor man that he met doing service work that had an IQ of about 60. Mm -hmm. And he said, Mr. Fred taught him more about love and life and joy than anybody he ever yeah. met in his life yeah. because, because he saw things in a much simpler way, kind of that of a child, I guess. Yeah. The, I mean, my job offers the opportunity to become childlike. I mean, we dance, we sing Disney songs, you know, we go on walks. I mean, it's just like every, all the adulting 
has an opportunity to go away, you know? Right, right. So it's good. Yeah, some days, some days there's a lot of tasks though mm -hmm. that are in the, the the dirty and grimy and tough and hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, yeah. Like I said, I never know what I have to walk into. You know, right. um, my client has really good days and really, really bad days. Um, and so, I just have to be present. You know, most of the people I talk to, we talk a lot about business and we talk about other things and, and their lives, uh, their passions are, are in multiple things. And, and you're a person that to me, your primary passion and not that their primary passion isn't, but it's shared well with other things. Mm -hmm. You you seem very heavy on the passion of your your relationship with Christ as, as being not just the forefront, but the total of how you live your life. Are there other things you have passion about? Yeah, family? Of course. Um, let me just say the relationship with Jesus, it just has to be part of you. It's got to be integrated. And from there it flows. And so it just becomes part of your day. It just, becomes a natural thing it's, it doesn't have to be hard um but yeah i have other passions uh, i love art anything that i can um work with my hands you know and um yeah i'll lose myself in painting like hours will go by and um just a uh, the reward of of seeing something that you created um I also love nature. Anytime that I can go out and um, like hike or yeah. find water, um, I feel I feel like water root, roots me. You know, centers me. I can um, just experience Christ's presence there. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Art, nature, service. Service, mm -hmm. service. So okay, well, tell me a little bit about service. Um, you know, I know you've been involved. You know a little bit about you. You've been involved with some missions and things like that, but how did how did all that stuff get started? And then what's what's some of the wildest things you've seen or been a part of? Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, well, I I've grown up Catholic all my life, um, but I never had a relationship with Jesus, um, and I never experienced Him as as alive um, until my confirmation retreat um, the summer before my 11th grade year of high school. So I don't know how old I was, maybe 16. Um, it was a time during adoration. And um, I can't even tell you the the retreat itself wasn't actually like impactful for me. Like sure there were, it was fun, you know, um, it was a weekend away with my friends. I had a really powerful confession that weekend. Um, and, but I wasn't expecting um, like to be in front of Jesus and um, it didn't happen right away. You know, I knelt down and um, I'd been to adoration before with my grandma and with my mom. Um, and all of a sudden, like the Eucharist, um, it was just alive. I can't explain it. It was just a feeling that I had that Jesus was um, alive up there and, and looking at me and his presence was so, I mean, uh, just close to me, you know? Um, and I guess going back to like a 16 year old mind, I wouldn't have articulated like the word, I, I wouldn't have said that I, it was an act of surrender, but it totally was. I gave my whole life to Jesus. Um, every aspect I mean, my academics was, was really important to me. Friends were really important. I mean, I gave him like the test I was about to take, the guy I liked, the future that I'd always had planned for myself um, to be a nurse, um, to, you know, travel to, I mean, everything. I felt like I went on and on and on and gave him every part of my heart, you know, yeah. uh, every person in my family, every relationship that I feel like I ever had at that, at that time, you know, um, and I just felt so empty afterward, you know, I was just crying. And then in an instant, um, that presence, that Jesus that was alive right there, that I had thought of as dead for so long, for all my life was in me, you know, like whenever I became empty, he filled me up. Yeah. Um, and I told him that day, I told him, um, I'll do anything for you as long as you never leave me. Um, and that's kind of just kick-started, kick you know, mm -hmm. um, pretty good at keeping promises. So I made that promise to him. And um, I, I like, I swayed a lot in high school. High school was hard for me. Um, 
because I wanted to, I wanted to have one foot in and one foot out. And also not, not many people were journeying with me then, you know, and teaching me how sure. to um, live as uh, like a, a disciple of Christ, you know? Um, and so, um, yeah, co college came around, the opportunity to go to college came around and I had my whole life planned out, you know, I was, I was going to be um, a, a nurse, a neonatal ICU nurse, um, I was going to buy a house by the age of like 23 or something crazy. I was going to, you know, just like all of these things from, from little details to big details. And um, all of a sudden I started having dreams about religious sisters and I'd never seen one. I mean, Whoopi Goldberg was the closest. <laughs> like, <Sister. laughs> yeah, that <laughs> was like, that was the only idea I had of a nun, you know? And so I was so freaked out by these like reoccurring and I would have referred to them as nightmares at the time of sisters. And they were just, it was like silent, black and white, like snapshots of their life and like kind of peaks. Very into dull, their day. very mundane. That, yeah. that was the image I had as a child too. Right, right, right. But I mean, these dreams weren't that way, you know, like it was right. just, it was, it was honestly just kind of like, an old time like um photo slide you know how right, the right. pictures keep like flashing and rolling sure. um that was kind of like the dreams and so that went on and on before I knew it, it was all I could think about um one thing led to the other um and I ended up discerning with the missionaries of charity mother Teresa's sisters um locally in Lafayette so I did go to college for one semester at that point um because I, I was just you know obviously um I was going to do, I was going to, I had, I had a plan, you know, right. and, um, and so, um, I couldn't, but after that one semester, I couldn't, I couldn't go anymore, you know, like this conviction that I needed to at least explore and know what a religious was, you know, was so deep, you know, um, so volunteering with the missionaries of charity was something I did for four months every day. I would, I would at least see them in prayer and um, go to holy hour or mass with them, if not go out and serve with them. So we do uh, nursing home ministry in the poor, poor nursing homes in Lafayette, um, hospital ministry, we visit the sick and the dying. Um, we had a kids ministry, I think once a month. It was so several things, you know, and um, just a lot of conversations and and they were so patient with me yeah. because I was like so raw in, in my faith. I didn't have a relationship with Jesus in prayer, you know, or anything like that. Um, I just knew I encountered him, you know, and so um, that okay, kind so of- earlier, earlier you mentioned that it, that it just needs to be, it just becomes part of who you are. Yeah. At that time, it was becoming. It wasn't- It, it wasn't, I wasn't completely convinced. I still really- wanted what I wanted, you know, and um, really, um, yeah, had a lot of plans for myself and um, still struggle with that, you know, like I still want a lot of things and, um, but anyway, so the missionaries of charity, they taught me, um, they taught me love for the poor, you know, and um, through them, I, I realized that, you know, I had a servant's heart. Well, I kind of always knew that I always wanted to be a caregiver, a uh, nurse, but the poor wasn't on my radar until I met them, you right. know, right. um, it was sudden that God like made it clear. I just, that, that I wasn't supposed to be there anymore. It was after those four, four and a half months. Um, and then I went back to college this time at Magnes in, in, um, Lake Charles. Sure. And it was there that I met some, um, amazing people that did have relationships with Jesus that became some of my best friends even to the day, you know, right, um, right. and yeah, just, I guess, through that, um, like, ownership of my faith and, and, um, and, like, relationship, um, the call to serve and the call to um, do something radical for the Lord, because he'd done so much for me, um, was just, I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't shake it. And so, shake, yeah. um, yeah. I encountered, so you went to McNeese and then, and then where'd you go from there? So I encountered family missions company based out, um, right outside of Abbeville. Okay. Um, I encountered some missionaries and, um, 
at, at one of their conferences. And I mean, it, I just knew, like I, I knew, I didn't even know what the conference that I signed up for was about that they that, that they'd put on. Um, but whenever I got there, I just knew. And uh, two weeks later as a college student, you can imagine, uh, I drained my savings account and hopped on a plane. I, I expedited a passport, hopped on a plane to Mexico and served with them for I think a week. Um, and never looked back. I I spent the whole um, next year preparing to enter as a full time um, foreign missionary. I was just spending a lot of time there, and um, eventually went through formation in September of 2015. Um, from there, I was sent to the Philippines for a year. Um, after that, I went to um, I chose uh, I discerned that I was called to Peru. Um, where I led a team of girls for so, two years. So in so in these places, either one is time. If we got, but uh, you could talk about one or both. But uh, you know, what is your world like? Like you know, I know I know people that do mission, and and, and God bless them. They stay in a nice, really nice hotel, and then they go, you know, and they go out and they help a little, and they come and look. We need that help. I'm not downing that at all. Um, but I'm very curious what your experience doing being there for a whole year. What was what was kind of like a week like or a day like or that type oh, of thing? Um, especially in Peru, we lived in solidarity with the poor. We um, our house looked like theirs. Um, we obviously had to do some modifications. The ceiling we lived outside essentially. Uh, we closed in our kitchen. We made it screen instead of just like open. Um, we put doors, like new doors on the rooms when we got there, a new ceiling, stuff like that, um, just to make it, we wanted to serve them as best we could and like approach them healthy and whole, you know? And so that was part of, you know, just some essential things that we had to get started. We had to do to get started, but our days looked a lot like theirs. We, um, I, I had a routine, I'd wake up every morning at five, I'd exercise, I'd have my prayer time. Um, and then, we'd have team prayer. That was essential. We always started every day with team prayer. Um, from there, we clean our house or encounter them in the market. Like we, we go to the market. We never had anybody cooking for us or cleaning for us or uh, doing anything like that. Like it was just um, entering into their lives. We went to Peru not knowing any Spanish, none of my teammate, me, not I was gonna, anyone. I was gonna ask that. I think you'd be prepared with knowing the language, but no. <laughs> no, it was charades for a, about charades, a year. Like <laughs> from, from, from January to October, we played charades. Um, or Google Translate was a lifesaver. <laughs> <laughs> as, as, yeah. uh, as imperfect as it can be. Yeah, it's a help. yeah. So simple ministry, simple ways to encounter the poor. Uh, that whole first year, I had um, like a bread ministry. I asked my grandma for her um her homemade bread recipe and so I'd make that I'd make like a ton of rolls at a time and uh I'd, I'd prepare like a, a short reflection of, of that Sunday's gospel reading and I'd rehearse the gospel and how to read it and you know just I mean and so then we'd we'd go out from there and we'd read the gospel we'd do the reflection and then it was a really easy just uh kind of routine I could say basically the same thing over and over like this is the word of God you know, this is so right. important. This is going to feed your soul. Right. And, and this is a loaf of bread. This is going to feed your stomach. It's temporary, right. but this will last forever. You know, so it's very, very simple message, but powerful. Um, I think we need that. I think that's, I think a lot of us need that simple message. Mm -hmm. You know, it seems to me that every time I, I run into somebody that's really struggling with having faith, that they're, they're often, they might be asking questions of theological questions, things like that. But very often, it's, they're still not sure if they really believe God is there for them. Mm -hmm. They might believe he exists, but mm -hmm. is he really, you know, they're bordering on that agnostic mm -hmm. and faithful mm -hmm. and, and doing that. And, and, and it gets tangled up in, in, you know, arguing over details and things that, okay, let's just get to, yeah. he is, yeah. and he's with you. Yeah. Yeah. Encountering the poor in their homes was so powerful. Like, us stepping into their lives was, um, I think, like a, a tangible way for them to see that we're equal, that we're brothers and sisters, and that we um, 
you know, we're all on this journey together, you know. Um, the poor, though, what like what surprised me most about becoming and, and this isn't this isn't we have a home with only basic cable and just one cell phone in the family no or this is <laughs> this is dirt floors this is this dirt is, floors yeah this is uh like incomplete roofs oh yeah yeah it's it, we saw some awful things in the philippines the poverty was way more intense and there were actually um there were actually people renting the dirt underneath someone's house to live there you know just yeah yeah yes yeah. it's crazy um but the most surprising thing um i think about becoming a missionary for me was the fact that like the poor know jesus you know like they don't have um many things to distract them you know like especially like the poorest of the poor like and and if they haven't encountered him they're so ready to you know like they're so hungry for for that fulfillment you know um right. i think that's 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 a big part of the you know camel in the eye of the needle mm -hmm. gospel mm -hmm. is is it's not that you're such bad people if you have money it's that it's so easy to be distracted by other idols mm -hmm. you know and, yeah. and 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 the poor and you know, we all we all want to avoid pain. Mm -hmm. You talked about it earlier. It was when you emptied yourself that you could be filled. Mm -hmm. You know, and and I have the same experiences in my life. It's it's my 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 biggest epiphanies and, and moments with Christ have come when I was at my at the most empty. When I when I would when I would admit my hopelessness, mm -hmm. right, my Weakness, helplessness, yeah. yeah, and be at that point. And so I. I, I love, you know, being able to go and see that and having the courage to do that on a daily basis, right? If, um, you know, when, when I, I've never been to another country and done that, so not to equate it, but as best I can to relate it, um, I, I've, I've done work with and, and helped out, you know, several homeless people doing those things. And, and it's not a, not on the back thing, it's a, just that experience though, every time it seems like God removes you know, scales from my eyes. He removes. He move, He removes. He shows me prejudices I have that I didn't know I had, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because these are really mostly they're they're just like somebody else. They have their struggles and they're trying to figure out the best way to live their life today. Oh, you know, do you you same thing with in your situation there? Or? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I learned a whole lot about my heart and um, the the ways that it was just being called to be more perfect and honestly more like the pores, you know, more simple, more um, receptive, more accepting, you know, um, like unbiased, like, I guess, undivided, you know, they undivided. just, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, that is just checking there. Um, so, okay. So you went, you Philippines, Peru, and was it from Peru back here? Yeah. Um, okay. So I, I thought I would stay in Peru for the rest of my life. I loved it so much. And um, in August of 2018, there was a stirring and that's the only way that I can explain it. I just, all of a sudden, uh, I guess the grace wasn't as present to be there. Um, the external uh, like trials of life were a little bit like they affected me a little bit more the bugs became more annoying the heat became more exhausting um there there was like there was just like an unrest um and so finally i was brave enough to take it to prayer and uh, i think it was september 2nd and i told god i was like i gave up everything i sold everything i'm not going if you're calling me home i wouldn't be going home to anything and so you have to make it abundantly clear that you're doing this. Um, so I'm not gonna tell anybody about this conversation and you need to offer me a job before the end of the month and a house would be nice too. And um, I closed my journal and pretty bold there. I left it at that. <laughs> yeah, and you know, that's not, nor that's not typically how I approach Jesus, but m my heart for Peru was so, like I was so in love with Peru and, and missions and that lifestyle. And so I, I was not happy to be experiencing this, but I would do anything for him. So um, 
on September, I think 17th, only about two weeks later, I got a random text from my um, parish priest back at home that um, and he asked me if I'd like a job as a youth director there and I cried. I knew immediately, I remembered my prayer immediately. Um, my heart was torn in two and, but like I knew that God was calling me home. Um, Did and, you get a house? Okay, so yeah, um, <laughs> so crazy. Yeah, whenever <laughs> whenever you ask God to, yeah, whenever I, man, he, he uses my, anyway. Um, so I prayed, I called him up and I was like, oh, can't believe you just did this to me. <laughs> you know, like I, I told him about my prayer time. I was like, you know, I just have to make sure it's, it's right. I'm going to pray a novena. Um, and in nine days, I'll call you back. I'm just going to pray for peace because right now it's not there. And um, by nine days later, I called him back and uh, I said, okay, I'm coming home, you know? And uh, he said, oh, great. You're going to have health insurance. And I got you a house for free. <laughs> <laughs> it's right next to the church. You don't even need a car. I was like, oh my gosh, praise you, Lord. Um, yeah. So for the next year and a half, um, almost two years, I had about 150 kids that from sixth grade to uh, 11th grade that I would prepare for their sacraments. We would meet for um, Life Teen and, and Edge, their middle school program, um, every Sunday and Monday. And uh, we, I would lead uh, retreats with a core team. And um, man, that was like the hardest but most blessed um, job. Like you saw very little fruit in that in that. But when you did, oh man, it was just the best taste, you know. Right. Um, right. Yeah, kids in America are different than than ones in foreign countries. Yeah. The same and different, you the know. The same and different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Uh, so you said you're studying nursing now. I am. You're, yep. You're, you're back in in, I in am. school. Yep. So I finished my job September of last year. It was kind of um, postponed due to COVID. Uh, the end of August, really, um, and then um, started my caregiving job, and recently just decided that it was time to to go back to school. So I actually start clinicals next fall, and I'll graduate in twenty twenty three, God willing. Yeah, yeah. awesome. Yeah, no telling. You know, you know, you know, we're challenging on that. Let's, yeah, let's, let's keep it just rolling. Yeah, uh, just keep it rolling. So you know, uh, wow, Olivia, there's so much in there, and and. And your willingness and your openness to just to to listen to the call and then for the call and then and then when it's there to be obedient to it right to 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 be willing to be obedient uh i, I think a lot of us like to think we are and then you know and then sometimes it's like ah, i think you got the wrong number <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure i'm the guy for that you know uh you know, when when I used to get that feeling of I was going to give somebody a ride, the first mm -hmm. few times I talked myself out of it, right? Just went through all the possibilities of what could go wrong. Um, and then eventually when I did, it, it's just, it's it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm real clear to tell people, I don't suggest you do what I do. And I don't think you would tell people that they, everybody needs to go to Peru. Yeah, right. No, absolutely it, not. It, it's uh, it's it's depending on the call, but it's about listening and and mm -hmm. and being willing that if we get the whatever that call is, mm -hmm. whatever it is. I encounter the same Jesus in my client right now that I did in Peru. It just yeah. looks different. Yeah, he's he's so good. I do I, I do have to say though, um, like just because you mentioned like my obedience and everything, it doesn't come that easy for me even still. Like my first reaction is fear like i respond out of fear initially and then that conviction that holy spirit just convicts me over and over and over again until i can't say no anymore you know right. and i like to think that i'm getting better at saying yes right away and in some situations i do and i, I respond um as fearlessly as i can you know but uh, absolutely fear stops me in my tracks and i think that's probably what stops a lot of people from serving Jesus is fear. I think it's a lot of a lot of what stops people from moving forward 
you know, in many things, mm-hmm. in relationships and work and their spiritual life and their relationship with Christ. And in doing that, I think that, you know, uh, pride is just another form of fear when we let it when we let us let it impact us mm-hmm. we're afraid people are going to find out that we're not who we think they think we are mm-hmm. yeah. most of them really know usually know we're not as good as we think yeah. they, mm-hmm. you know uh, ask any one of my eight brothers and sisters yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, having, having a large family can definitely bring some humility right yeah right. uh and, and doing it and you know so so to those people out there um that are they're they're just trying to hard hard to live trying hard to live a good life, mm-hmm. you know, and, and maybe their faith level is they have a faith, they have, they're not even sure what it is, you know, and without saying, well, you need to believe in Christ, uh, uh, you know, um, kind of thing. How, how do you think the things you've learned from doing all this, you know, how does that help somebody? How can that help somebody? Um, I think it's just, it's really simple to follow Jesus. It, it doesn't have to be radical. Like God would have blessed me in the same ways had I, had I chosen to stay and not go on um, to foreign countries. You know, he, he doesn't need all of that. Obviously he uses it and he calls some people to do it, but he's, he's here right now in this conversation. You know, he's um, there at my client and always constantly in my client, you know? And so it's, I think it's mother Teresa, like said, or like in a conversation, um, like she talked about, like sometimes I, and this always stuck with me because this is like, this is our lives. We can encounter Jesus in, in anybody. And so she would talk about being on a plane or a train or, you know, traveling and not being able to be in front of the blessed sacrament. And so she choose one person on that plane or on that train just to find, like just to stare at it sounds right. like really weird but uh she'd stare at them and find jesus in them you know and um and if we pray for the gift to have his eyes you know to um see those opportunities where he's at like he's 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 in the little moments you know he's in the really yeah picking people up on the side of the road i mean um or or even like less crazy than that encountering something someone um at the cash register and just being like willing to like intentionally encounter those people you know um yeah. be present yeah just be present to him and like at knowing that he's in that person in front of you you know yeah i you know one of my one of my things and um and, and shameless plug meeting home to jesus you know <laughs> one of the things in my book one of the chapters is loving those who the father puts in our path and and to me that's part of the simplicity Mm -hmm. that i have to put in place is uh, you know i want to i want to do the grand service work right um i even hear about your mission work and i'm like man i never do anything like why 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 do i need to have that conversation in my head right Mm -hmm. when that's not been what's been put Mm -hmm. in my path Mm -hmm. to do uh so it's 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 really about loving those who he puts in our path on a daily basis and, and following that. And to me, that is, that is the best way for me to know that it's not about my ego. That's not about me just trying to, you know, one up myself or whatever, you know, that it's just yeah. that service because I didn't put them there. Yeah. 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 So, is there anything else you'd like to say? Um, no, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> no? did you enjoy this yeah i did thank Good. you so much All right thank you so much for being here and everybody out there it's david wooden with uh profiting from your passion podcast uh you can check me out on my website davidwooten.com w-o-o-t-o-n thanks god bless good night <laughs>